Hey everyone, Rebel Spy here, bringing you new Shadow Era commentary number four. Uh, today's theme is be flexible, and uh, you'll hear why in a little bit. Let's, let's go ahead and launch into the game. Um, um, I am playing. Playing a Gwyn deck um, um, against an Amber deck, and, and going into this game, uh, uh, my opponent was rated 253. Uh, uh, so they're obviously a, a, a pretty good player. I'd say anyone who's about 220 or above has to be a, f a fairly decent player or um, I suppose they, they could be playing my and, and be a ter terrible player but most most players who get up there are um, are at least decent to to pretty good um, um, to be rated to two fifty. Um, my my opponent's probably going to be a decent player, and, and you'll see he does make quite quite a few plays in this game that that are. are uh, Pretty good. Um, so I do get to go first, and uh, I sack a card, and he sacks a card. We and I, I play a Puin as my two drop here. Um, and, and, uh, uh, kind of my plan in going in, into this, um, obviously is to get some board control. Well, he plays a Blood Frenzy, which, which is going to give him some draw advantage, but luckily I, I am playing, playing several um, um, bad Santas and Bazaar, so I do have a Bazaar where I play as my three drop and, and hit, hit him with my, my poo and so now was his blood frenzy won't, won't be doing whole ton for him other than pinging him for, for one health until, until he starts to play multiple cards per turn in which case after that he'll, he will be gaining a card but uh, uh, it's not a huge deal he, he, he goes ahead and plays Plays a crippling blow for his three drop, and and, and um, um on my four drop, I I don't have a beetle demon both, so I, I play an Alden and and just hit his hero for, for one with the the, the crippled. Um, and like I was saying, my plan going into this, I think, is obviously to get some board advantage. You generally always want that. And then to kind of use my boat to attack 
back his hero. Um, he, he plays the jeweler's dream here and, and takes out the Puma and it gives, gives him two extra resources which, which he uh, then, then uses on, on a retreat to bounce my Alden back to my hand. And, and uh, uh, so kind of clear the board there. Um, um, so for my five Drop. Um, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause right here and kind of explain my thinking on this because I did have a soul seeker in my hand and I did have a bow and and so for my my five drop I I kind of sat there for for a little, a little bit. You know, you know, ten or fifteen seconds tr- debating what the best move would be. Um, but between what I obviously did here, the Poon and the Alden versus dropping Soul Seeker and uh, hitting him. reason why I did what I did, did uh, the, the two allies, is I figure at best he can kill one, the Puen with the um, with the jeweler's dream. And, and then I'll still have an ally on board that helps me maintain board advantage. Um, always, 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 I'm thinking long term. Uh, um, like we talk, talk, talked about in that last, last video, not thinking about how was this going to help me this second and but how am I going to win the game? And, and yeah, um, dropping out a bow and hitting his hero for four would do a little bit more this turn. But I'm thinking about next turn, I want to... Uh, that Poon's going to die with his sword, but um, otherwise my hero would be taking a hit anyway next turn. So he's soaking up the hit for my hero and um, and then it's going to leave me with still one guy on the board to keep that board advantage in case he, he does toss out an ally this turn. I can then toss my ball next turn. If it's a real buff ally, hit it with Alden and hit it with my bow and keep that board advantage that I need to. Um, um, so that's ultimately there. Uh, uh, I guess my, my reasoning behind it, not, not tossing out, out a bow at my five, five drop, but instead tossing out those two allies. Um, so for his five-drop, 
he um, plays a raven, uh, which, which is never a, really a card you want to see, and he does take, take out that poo um, And then, then he uses the two extra resources from the jeweler's dream to go go ahead and bounce my old and back, back to my hand. Shoot, well, well now we've gone from me having a uh, uh, board control to him having board control with that Raven. And, and, and Raven is tough, tough to take out. I, I do have a beetle Demon Bowl. Let's, let's go ahead and pause because here's another strategic decision. Why do I talk about this Beetle Demon Bowl instead of a Soul Seeker? Uh, a couple of reasons. The, the main reason is, is that um, um, Soul Seeker doesn't, doesn't help me kill was Raven. Uh, either way, whether I do four with Soul Seeker and then it dies next turn with the next four, or whether I do three this turn, knocking her down to three and then kill her next turn. Um, either way, it's going to take two shots to kill her. Um, so Soul, Soul Seeker doesn't give me an advantage there. But more importantly, Beetle Demon Bow is going to turn into an ally for, for me. So my plan is, is uh, uh, pop it out this turn, hit his raven for three and, and then next, next turn I, I'm going to, to turn it into an ally pop out my soul seeker, shoot him with the soul seeker gaining three health and then I'll have an ally and the soul seeker out so that, that's why I, I played um, the Beetle Demon Bow instead of the Soul Seeker this turn. Uh, let's go ahead and, and continue. Uh, um, so I do hit his, his Raven for three there. And uh, um, of course she, she retaliates back and then and as once again in his turn he, he's still maintaining that board control with the raven but I, I just explained my, my plan for that, that and then he drops out another raven it seems like kind of a common theme here to be Double Raven. If you watched my portal video, then you'll see that that's uh, something I'm not unused to facing. He, he does uh, uh, does does attack my hero with his Raven. And um, with his jeweler's dream, and then he uses the two extra resources from his jeweler's dream to play a third retreat. Ridiculous. 
ridiculous. Um, um, and he, he bounces his raven back to, to his hand. And see, this, this, is, this is a smart play. Um, um, he, he knows next, next turn, I've got that beetle demon bow that can do three damage. He's got, got the raven that only has three health. Why leave her out there to just die? Yeah, she'll soak up a hit for his hero, but he's not as concerned about that as he has board control advantage. Like I said, my opponent's fairly high rated, and he's making and smart plays here. Bouncing her back to his hand so he can play her later and keep that board advantage. It is a pretty decent play there. Instead of just leaving her out to die. Um, so he, he does bounce her back to his hand and he now, again, has a full health raven out there. Um, so what I do is I do go ahead and turn that beetle demon bow into an ally, and I play a soul seeker, and I play a puan. Now, uh, I use my soul seeker to, to attack his hero, not, not his, his raven. A um, um, couple reasons why. Here, here's my thinking on this. One, his uh, uh, weapon was down to one as you can see there, when I, I shot it, uh, uh, it made it die. So hopefully, he, um, hopefully he doesn't have another weapon. But of course, with all the card draw don't go on. He probably does, but, but at least it's killed that. Um, and then hitting his raven doesn't really help me because next, I'm still just going to have to kill it, but next, next turn with the soul seeker. Instead, here's my plan. I hit his hero, get rid of his weapon. I've got two allies on board. Raven can only hit one of them, likely the beetle demon bow, because it does more damage. Raven will hit that and make it attack zero. Then on my turn, I can use Puin to hit Raven and then shoot her with um, my soul seeker gaining three health, or I can hit her with the soul seeker first, and then have Pooh and finish her off. But, but at the very least, with two allies out, um, um, Raven will hopefully die my next turn because one. One of the allies will, will hit her, and then the soul seeker will finish it off. Um, it's doubtful he has a fourth uh, retreat. He's already played three at this point, so I figure I'm just going to attack his hero because Raven will die. 
turn rather than shooting her with with the soul seeker and then still still having her die next turn. So there's my reasoning on that. So let's let's, uh, uh, let's go ahead and go go on. on. He ends up um, um, he play, plays a smashing blow on, on my weapon. Wonderful. Uh, this is going to be a little, a little tough because he, he has item destruction and I don't. So I only got to use that full seeker once, whereas he's, he's going to get to use his swords uh, uh, until they, they wear out. Um, so he does, does destroy my bow. bow. I, I, I do have another one in hand, so I'm not too worried. But um, it, it is slightly annoying. Um, and then he, he plays a, a poon and does, does attack, attack my building bow with his, his raven. Knocking it down to zero health. Um, um, on my turn, uh, um, I a card and, and I play my soul seeker and, and here's a, 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 an interesting decision and I'm going to go ahead and pause on on and, and explain why I did that because obviously I could have killed his raven um, by hitting it with Poon and then with the Soul Seeker. The problem with that is then my Poon dies. Um, by killing his Puin, I gain three health right away. And um, I, I help just keep his allies off the board. The Raven, I'm not too worried about. And here's why. Oh, oh it, 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 here's my reasoning. Um, it depended on the card I had in my hand. Uh, um, I've got a... a Fire shot, whatever. Dual wield is the sword one that does double damage. Rapid fire is the name of it. I've got a rapid fire in my hand, and it's going to let me do two shots. Um, so I wanted to heal up a little bit and kill his spoon off the board so he can't do too, too much damage to me. But then I'm going to hit his hero with, with my spoon. Now he's down to, as you can see, 15 health, and the blood 
one frenzy is gonna about to take off one. That'll put him at fourteen. Then on my turn, my plan is my next turn. I'm gonna pop him twice. I'm gonna dump out rapid fire, hit, hit him twice. That'll knock, knock him. For, uh, uh, that'll take, take off eight, eight. So knock him from fourteen down. Down to six. The next turn, blood frenzy will take him down to five. I can hit him with the. I, I basically my my plan at this point is to ignore the. The raven, and, and just go after his hero. So I pop the Pewin just so that he doesn't get too many allies on board. I heal up a little bit of health, but I, I, I still don't want to be attacking his hero right now. I want to do attack his here with my poop doing. Um, so I did go ahead and and uh, uh, and get that, that rolling. And my my plan now is I'm just just gonna ignore the, the raven and just just keep going after his hero. Um, um, and I talked about about this a l- little bit at the end of the last, last game. Um, where I, I was saying, think long term. Think long term. You, you want to only uh, kill their allies. Establish four position. Attack their allies. And and I said, well, there are some situations where you do want to ignore their allies and attack their heroes. So, going right here, I was in the middle of playing this game, and I was like, oh, oh great, this is the perfect situation. Um, I'm, he's got this, this raven out, um, and uh, uh, he plays a weapon here, and he does go ahead and kill my poo and, and his raven. Uh, oh, and then that extra two resources he gets. Allows him to play another smashing blow. Oh. So now he's killed off two of my bows. And, and I do believe I have more. But the problem is now I can't play rapid fire and a bow. Um, and he, he hits my hero with Raven. Uh, uh, those smashing blows are, are getting kind of annoying. Um, um, but no big deal. Um, I I do have, have another. Seeker, and I play a Blake, and then it's uh, uh, and then I attack his hero. See, I'm 
getting to a point where all I'm doing is attacking his hero right, right now. Now I hit his hero before. I, I don't care about that raven because I'm going to kill him faster than he can kill me. That's the plan at least. So now, now he's down to 10. And and um uh, uh blood friends you'll knock him down down to nine. My plan plan is next next turn so now he's at nine of the blood frenzy. And here's my plan. Next turn, I mean, unless he has a 